How are you? Ciao, ciao. How are you? I'm very good. And you? All good. good. Very good. Good. Thank you for taking the time to be here with me tonight. It means so much, you have no idea. <laughs> it's a big pleasure, eh? So, Willy, you are very well known around the business, all around the world, for all the breeders, because of course you did so much uh, in, for, for all our breeding program. Uh, so I am sure that a lot of people is interested to be with me uh, live with you tonight. Uh -huh. And my first question yes. starts from, it's a personal question, yeah. because I have always heard about you, we talked many times, but you know what? I don't really know your story. So can you tell me about yourself? Where do you come from? Well, I'm obviously coming from South Africa, I was born here, and um, I grew up here in this valley between all the nice vineyards and everything. So yeah, I mean, um, this is where I come from. So, and I always had a passion for horses since I was a young age. Um, not Arabian horses at first, I had saddle breeds when I was younger. And yes. yeah, and then at uh, some stage in 1996, everything changed. I mean, um, I had a cattle farm and a sh where I farmed with cattle and sheep, and I had to start like a hobby with horses. And then I decided to have Arabian horses. And um, together with the farm and the cattle and the sheep, I started with um, breeding some, at a small scale, some Arabian horses. Yeah, and that's where it all started. So, and since then it was nonstop. So it's a, from, I think, 1998 now, until now. So yeah, quite a while. And why El Kassun Arabians? Where did the no name come from? Well, it's actually very, uh, uh, my mother actually helped me to got the name because our family farm name was Elkana. And then my mother decided, well, maybe Elkana with the sun that shines over the farm. So that's where actually the whole name came from. So it's quite a, yeah, the farm, our family farm was named Elkana. And then we just put the sun at the back and then we got to El Kassan. So yeah, never thought it would be like such a, such a name, eh? Well, <laughs> it is such a name and especially the EKS, it's very, very powerful. Yeah, the EKS <laughs> actually came after El Kassan because Every time I needed to register a horse and I need to put Elkasan in front, I just thought it was just too long. Elkasan this, Elkasan that. So we decided to make it like a short version and then, yeah, EKS came, came along. So, yeah. Things come by themselves. <laughs> it's, it's the best. Exactly. <laughs> and really, tell, tell me about how did you build your breeding program? Like, where did you start? Uh, how did you select your, your first lines? And how do you develop it? Well, it, it was quite an interesting adventure for me because um, I had a lot of, like, search, do research and everything. So everything started actually in America. I mean, um, the first horse that I ever exported in my life, imported to South Africa, was from America and it was from a very, very um, famous breeder, trainer by the name of Michael Byte. Everyone knows him. So that's where it actually all started. I mean, um, I went a lot to America. I learned a lot from Michael. And, but what I did is I learned a lot, but I made it my own thing. Because, I mean, like, um, it's easy to try and be a copycat and try to breed some, somebody else's horses. But in the end of the day, I think you need to be a creator of your own breeding program. You need to have a style. You need to have a feeling about it. And if you have a style that you like and you have a feeling about it, because a lot of breeding comes from the inside of you. Like I've been my whole life a horse person. I like to ride. And the breeding side for me is a very interesting thing. And the fact that in South Africa, we're very limited. We cannot import semen. So we need to do things in a different way. So, and I mean, a couple of years ago, I decided to go and buy some stallions, import them, use them on the mares. And until now, I must say, I mean, I breed with Marwan, I breed with a lot of famous stallions in the past, but since I use the younger generation stallions, give them a chance on the mare foundation that we had, I think until now, it made a big difference in our breeding program because um, we always try to do something different. We don't want to copycat. We use a lot of info and see a lot what other people do. But at the end of the day, we try to create our own thing. So I think yeah, we're a little bit, I mean, we're far away from everything and we're very limited. You need to think out of the box how to go forward. So yeah, it's not always easy, but 
for now, this is what I like. So, and until now, I think our breeding program, what we did until now, um, yeah, I mean, it speaks for itself. I, I can say yeah. that. I mean, for sure, <laughs> for sure, it speaks by itself. Absolutely. And uh, we were talking just before with Skyro Arabians about the outcross, yeah. you know, like he likes to breed, for example, Spanish with straight Egyptian. Do you like the outcross as well? Yes. You know, I, I had a lot of American pedigrees and then we used some straight Egyptian pedigrees and, you know, outcross is a, it's like the Egyptian Spanish. It's an, it's an outcross. So we have a lot of Spanish in the pedigree. We have a lot of Egyptian in the pedigrees. But then we need, we put some modern things to those kind of pedigrees. So we also have two new stallions that we're very excited about. I know it's not um, how it's such, uh, I mean, the dam lines are very good. Um, it's non-proven stallions. Okay, the one stallion had some babies in America, but it will be interesting to see what they're going to do on the Egyptian Spanish cross, which we also have. And then also we have uh, like Alejandro daughters. We have even Paris daughters. So. It's a, it's a mixture, so yes, outcross is important, but yeah, you need to breed your mares to a stallion that can fix the problems your mares have. So it doesn't help you have a mare and you want to breed her to the world champion stallion if the world champion stallion is not going to fix the problems on the mare. So this is the kind of thing that comes from inside. You need to have an eye, you need to evaluate your own horses and maybe step out of the box and not look a lot what's going on around you but fix, try to fix your own problems in your own stable yard this is my that's been my um philosophy since i've started breeding horses is evaluate your own horses see what they need and if the world champion stallion is not the right stallion then you find something else for it so so yeah. and tell me do you think that riding horses as you told me and then you already before you you love to ride yeah. do you think riding horses also helps the breeding like if you ride your horse, you, you probably know better how to breed or not? It doesn't no, affect. No, at the end of the day, riding horses needs to be functional horses. This is the most important thing. So you can imagine for yourself, if you only breed, I mean, maybe I'm going to be hit hard now, but let's say you only breed for to have a pretty face and you don't have the rest. What are you going to do at the end of the day? It's like the market is getting so tough now that everyone is just concentrating on breeding pretty faced horses but at the end of the day we still need to have that functional horse side also because if it's not pretty enough it still needs to be rideable so so yeah it's a balance you need to keep and everything in life is like balance breeding horses breeding anything in life you need to keep a balance between what is the extreme and the not extreme so we need to find the the midway and this is why we have this philosophy is to to try and breed functional horses that if they are not pretty enough, they can still do riding classes, they can still do endurance because in South Africa, the South African horses that are bred here are actually doing quite a good job in the Middle East as endurance horses. So, so that's the kind of thing that you need to, to keep in mind is just not breed for a pretty face, but also try to breed a functional horse. Of course. And I have another question um, that just came in my mind, actually. Uh, nowadays, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of people in the business, they don't want uh, uh, to buy or to have mares that are older than 10 years old. Do you agree? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of thing, but I think it depends on how your breeding program works. Because some mares can produce, at four years old, a superstar. Some mares can breed a superstar at eight, nine years old. It's all about the right nick or the combination you put to the mare. So you can imagine if you start to breed your mare at four years old and you breed her to the wrong stallion, then you will not breed anything. So if you start and you breed her to the right stallion at four years old, you can have something mm -hmm. spectacular. So it depends on it, the mare, the lifespan of a mare, it's long. It's only to find the right combination to this mare to make her a super producer and a good producer and or not. And do you think a mare like 13 or 14 years old, she can still produce something nice or it's too old already? Well, I bought a mare, a locally mare, she was 12 years old. And the first baby I bred out of her was the best baby she ever bred. So it's, and I keep her in my breeding program now. So it's a, it's a thing that you need to try, but you know, as I said, it's all about the combination. It's not about the age, it's all about the genetics. 
if you put the wrong genetics to this mare, for sure it will be our job to to produce something. It's like with the young mare also. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Willie, you have just so much knowledge that uh, if I could, I would stay probably here all night long, like keep asking you questions. <laughs> no, no, it's no problem. <laughs> this is amazing. So, one logistical question. You told already to us that it is uh, for sure very difficult for you in South Africa to breed in because you cannot import semen, because you are very far away. So, of course, it's more difficult than for me that I'm in Europe. Which are the other difficulties that you can face there besides the, the import-export import of the horses and semen? Well, our logistics side is very, very difficult, you know, to breed a horse in South Africa that have the potential to compete in the big shows in Europe and in the Middle East. It's our logistics side is very, to export the horse from South Africa in the first place, very expensive. And yeah, it's a thing that we've been trying to fix for many years now, but it's not easy. I mean, it's the, the, you have to have patience and you need to, to believe that it's the right horse to send there because of the expenses and stuff like this. But, yeah, logistic-wise, it's uh, it's not easy. It's uh, for us, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's. But at the end of the day, we still love what we do. So it just takes us more time. And at the end of the day, I also think it's not a, it's a benefit because we're so far away. So if people want to come and visit the farm, they need to do, they might to buy, put some effort into it. And for sure, if they put some effort in, if you put effort into anything, maybe something will happen. So, so yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. Totally. And so, Willie, tell me, because I wrote down some questions here, your contribution to the breeding program that we have today and to the horses that we see today in the show scene and not only, of course, was massive, like huge. And of course, I want to talk at, at least about one horse that you probably know who, who this horse is. <laughs> of course, Aliandro. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about your story with him? Like, you know, when it was, when you saw him, you know, when you followed him and then how was your journey, like seeing him becoming who, who he became? Well, it was, it was quite a long story. So I don't know how many times you had, but I'm going to try and do it in brief. So what happened <laughs> is I went to America and I saw the mayor in the paddock with Michael Byatt and I really liked the mayor. And I asked Michael if she was for sale. He said, yes, she was for sale. And she was already in full tomorrow. And so we imported her to South Africa. And she had a baby on the ground. And the baby was born. And um, yeah, let's see. Let's say it was not special. It was nice, but not special. But the baby had a raw deal at six months. The baby died. So, and then... Um, I was really disappointed because I had a lot of faith in this mare with this combination with Marwan. And then I decided to, to breed the mare back to Marwan again. And my dad, I will never forget it, my dad told me, listen, Willie, maybe we need to use another stallion. I said, no, I'm going to use the same stallion, we're going to do the same combination. And the day Alejandro was born, I will never forget it. I was still working for my dad and he sent me to Cape Town to pick up something for him at the factory. And I told my groom, I said, if the mayor gives the baby, you phone me. And I was in Cape Town. When I arrived at the place to pick up the package, the baby Alejandro was born. So the groom, he phoned me and he said, uh, you need to come. I said, okay. So what I did is I just leave the package there and I drive all the way back home to see the baby. And it was not, was I think two hours. And he was already standing up and make some noises. And I stepped into the barn and I told my dad, I think this horse has the ability to be a world champion. And he was only like six hours old. And since that day, I mean, the expectations I had from this horse was really high. But I always had this thing inside me that I think he has the potential to do it. And then I was very fortunate to get Giacomo to show him at the nationals. And he was national champion Colt. And then... Between me and Giacomo, we decided the horse, he needs to go to Europe. And yeah, there the whole story started with Alejandro. So, was, I mean, this horse is very close to my heart. I mean, I mean, I love Farage and everything is a super horse. But this, this kind of Alejandro, he has a really special place in my heart, for sure. How did you leave his success, even if from far, even if he was not with you? But uh, how did you leave it when you... Because he is probably one of the few horses that is completely unbeaten, like nobody ever... Yes, <laughs> won. This, this, is, this is like, this is for sure like this. But, you know, I mean, yeah, 
it's like a once in a lifetime horse, I think. So, I mean, yeah, as I said, I always believed in this mare and I always believed in him. So, I think a lot of people, breeders just should believe in their own breeding program and if they have a good one just believe that he can go to the top i think this, this is uh, we have to have this mentality i think so yeah absolutely and tell me willie this was the the major uh, success you had or like the the moment you were more proud about your breeding program with alejandro or with some other horses no. as well no alejandro he made a big change in my Yes, at the end of the all the horses that we exported is we try to send the best we have. The less good ones we can keep in the farm to best, but our belief in our breeding program is if we have a good one from a stallion, we want to try and get it out of the country to compete at the, all the shows because competing in the shows is the only measurement that we can have to our start is to, to see how our horses can compete with the rest of the world. So. So yeah, I mean, after Alejandro, it, he for sure made a big impact in how I think and how I, how I thought, thought I want to run the, the business and the breeding program. So yes, I mean, but there was also a lot of important people with him. I mean, I mean, like Giacomo, Ward Mimong. So it's, yeah, it's good to have all these and also Adba. I mean, it's also always good to have these people behind the horse that they believe in. So for sure. The Raven Horse brings people together. I always say that because it's just the truth. Like, exactly. And the Raven so much to all of us. So it's, it's beautiful. Yes. Billy, I know that uh, as one of the news, uh, you um, remade your farm, or at least you, you improved your farm in, uh, in South Africa. Can you tell me more about this? Yeah, actually, we had, uh, we're on the farm that I was born. I mean, we had the stables there, but uh, three, four years ago, I decided to, because my dad gave me the opportunity, we had some vacant land that there was nothing. And um, like we are three children and we were very fortunate to get each children. My dad decided to give a, give a piece of property. And then um, yeah, I, I took it like I, I never said no, because I always had this dream to have my own horse farm and design it the way I would like it to be. So yeah, three, four years ago, we started with this project. and. And yeah, now it's finished. We've been staying on the farm for one year now. And yeah, I must say, it's like, a, it's like a really like a big dream come true. So nice. Yeah. And when you find things yourself, it's like breeding. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, you know, the whole farm we did. I mean, like I've been a farmer boy working for my dad for many years. So I like to do things my own. So we started those whole project. I mean, I was in control of the building and we were, we did all the paddocks ourselves, all the irrigation. So yeah, it was a really nice, nice trip, but hard working for two years. But um, I must say now we've been living on the farm for one year and we're actually living together with the horses. I mean, it's there all around us. Even if we make a barbecue, we can just check to the side and you can see some of the Arabians popping their heads over the windows and the door. So yeah, it's a, it's like a dream come true, so. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I wish one day I would be able yeah, to come sure. to South Africa. Sure. You're more than welcome. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yes. Willie, now I have a, we talked about your farm. We, I went a little bit more personal. I went on the breeding program. Um, now, as I really respect you as most of the people in, the, in our world, I want to ask you something more as an advice, as a suggestion. Yeah. I want to know what you think about things. So how do you see our Arabian horse show scene uh, going? How do you see our future in that, in that, in that sense? Well, Francesca, it's a, it's a very difficult question, but I'm gonna be, how you say, I'm gonna be very diplomatic. I think a lot of things need to change and change for the good for the industry because the things i think and it's only my personal opinion i mean but i think things are not going in the right direction it needs to go and i think we as breeders as the arabian industry need to have a clear look at what's happening maybe listen to some smaller breeders how they think about it and but um, in my opinion, if we don't reconsider and look at things for the future, 
I'm, I'm actually a little bit worried about how things are going. So, so yeah, I think that can be a discussion for another day. But I think, yeah, I think it's important for smaller breeders around the world to start talking about things and see if we cannot fix these things. Because if we're not going to fix it, I think, yeah, I cannot see how it can go on like this. Some things need to change. And it's not only my opinion. If you look at the shows, the amount of horses that are showing in the shows now in Europe, I mean, even judging Paris last year, I mean, the amount of horses in Paris, the amount of horses, even now I was not in Menton, but the live stream, the amount of horses entered for Menton. You know, Menton, I would always remember. And actually what was really nice today is today on my Facebook post, post 10 years ago, Alejandro was junior champion in Menton. And I can remember how many horses 10 years ago was in Menton, how tough the classes were in Menton. And if you look 10 years down the drain, we need to really take our glasses off and see what's happening. It's, it's, uh, it's not going forward. I think it's going more downwards than it's going forward. But let's leave that for another day. I think it's enough said for the moment. So let's see. I ask you because of course uh, uh, you you made some posts uh, in, in the in the past months and whatever so you are willing of course to talk and what i want to do here at the insider news is of course to share knowledge is my first thing to have nice conversation for every passionate of arabian horses but uh, it's also a, a platform that we have that connects yeah. people from all over the world where we have to talk about things that are not working because at the end of the day we all want to be in this passion in this business we want yeah. this to keep going so if we are like we don't we don't see the problems then the problems will eat us also, I, them. also francesca i mean in my opinion it's a lot of people involved it's a it's a big industry it's like it's it's like a it's like a big system so and what i've seen and I've, what i've heard in the past is everyone is talking behind the scenes they don't want to come up front and talk about these things in in public or but at the end of the day the only way to fix things in life is to talk about it if you don't talk about it then nothing will change so and this is my opinion eh? so only my opinion but i think a lot of breeders opinions so so let's the same see. way. Well, we we'll, then uh, I let's let's make a deal. Let's organize uh, another episode of the Insider News, maybe in which we invite also some other judges uh, that are willing to speak, and uh, let's write down a list of content and a list of things that we need to talk about, and we do exactly. it. At least we talk. Exactly. exactly. For me, no problem. Very good. I'm very happy that you're in for that. <laughs> okay. Okay, really. Well, I I don't know how to thank you for your presence. Really, this was one of the interview I enjoyed most. People uh, that are following us also wrote many uh, actually comments to thank you to say that it was a nice interview. To thank you very uh, much. Actually, it's always a big pleasure if we can speak about Arabian horses. Absolutely yes. Super. Absolutely yes. So I wish. You all the best, Willy. I hope to see you very soon. And thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your knowledge with us all. Thank you. It's a Big gift. pleasure. It's really a gift. Okay. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Have a good evening. Same to you. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, ciao.